G'day guys, what's cracking? It's Ralph here and today I have for you a lens that is the smallest, shallowest lens in the world. There you go, you heard it from me. Perhaps not in the world, but it is definitely the shallowest I've ever seen. It's a 28mm AF 4.5 FE lens from Viltrox that goes on a Sony e-mount camera and they have a campaign firing up right now. There's a link in the description below for you to go and check out for yourself and there's some cool like discounts that you can get if you access through this video whenever you like. So <laughs> let me show you. Like, oh my gosh. Okay, nice packaging. Does not want to give up the lens. Come on, give up the lens. You can do it. Aha. Like, are you kidding me? Look, I'm gonna take off the lens cap. What? The front lens cap is just a little button, like this. And you're thinking, nah, it's too small. Like, could it possibly take a good photo? Well, that's what I'm thinking. As a red dot just here, you line up with your dot on your camera and you turn it on. One of the beauties of this lens is it's small. <laughs> yeah, we've covered that. It's noiseless. So it has an autofocus in here, which is really quite good, quite swift and very quiet and takes up like no profile. This lens, if you can even see it on the camera, is a 4.5 constant aperture. That means you can't change the aperture from 4.5. One of the challenges of that is you only are left with shutter speed and ISO to control your exposure. But look how small it is, it's completely inconspicuous. So you can walk around, do street photography, anything you like, and people don't even realize you've got a massive lens on the front of your camera because it's massive within, not outside, not externally speaking. It's a full frame lens, surely it's a winner. As you can imagine, this lens is ridiculously light, 60 grams. Yes, that means it's that in ounces. Nothing, you don't even realize you're touching it. But the challenge is it's a prime. Now the beauty of primes at 28 mil means you have to work to get the shot you want. So you're forced to be more creative and involve yourself in the shot. Whereas previously you could use the lens to do that. So that's one of the advantages of a prime to stretch and increase your creativity. Has a minimum focusing distance of 32 centimeters from the sensors. So my sensors here, so we go out about 32 centimeters and that puts us about there. So you're not going to want to use this for macro, but if you make a meal, like say you're a chef and you're making meals or in your restaurant and you want a camera that can just be pulled out for those shots of plates and of family and everything, 28 mils should be able to do you nice this way and then nice this way. The other unique thing about this lens is there's no manual focus. Now the challenge with that is if the autofocus is seeking, you can't help correct it by jumping over to manual or manually adjusting it while it's in auto. I took the lens down to Bond University. It's a place really close by with a lot of beautiful sandstone, which I thought would be a wonderful test for this lens. All of these images are unedited and there was no light. The light was just flat and gray. So you'll get to see some of the details, what this lens can do in the worst possible photographic situations ever. This is zoomed into 100%. But look at the detail and the color that it picks up just in that sandstone. Then uh, I focused in on the fountain, which was also moving, and you'll see that this was 1 over 250th. You'll notice the 4.5 never changes, the ISO goes up and down, and the 28 mil never changes because we've covered why that is already. If we zoom into the water, uh, it's at 1 250th. We see some of this formation here, and you see the blurriness in the background, but that actually looks pretty good. And of course, that's blurry because our field plane of focus is right across here. These are some of the, just the architectural shots that around the place that I just wanted to capture for you and show off so you can see what you think around the quality of this lens. Focusing was really quite easy. It didn't have to search much at all unless there was a difference between, say, here and here, and it was quite dark. The darkness here was 1250 ISO at 1/200th, so it wasn't super dark, but it wasn't the brightest. But look at the detail that it picks up here. Now this will help also. I focused on these names. This is at 4.5, and you'll see where it starts to go from really quite sharp, and then it starts to get blurrier and blurrier, and you'll see what quality, look at that. The bokeh is so, 
so blurry, bokerish, that you lose all definition of that. And you can see everything in the background is really blurry, but this is nice and sharp just here. And then as it moves closer, that bird poo, for example, is not in focus, thank goodness. But if I focus on this area with the lens, so I move my lens from my focal point from here to here, and it picks up this building in the background, watch what happens. Boom. So all of this gets blurry, but you start to see a little bit of definition in that. But look at the definition that's in the background there. So I was really quite impressed. This is all super, super in focus because this is a long way away, even though it's through a reflection and it's behind me rather than it being in front of me. Yeah, get that? It's a mural. So that's why it's all uh, back to front. Uh, this is me. Um, so I'm blurry, which is fine uh, because the world isn't. The world looks good. Uh, it's good good news folks the world looks good yes and then we have the bokeh in the background but you can see look at the clarity of those names and the see that the further you are away from something the deeper the focal plane is that you've got to work with and if we just go up yeah so even there even there in focus somewhat not super super sharp because we're focusing here but you start to get a feel for how you could use this 4.5 now this is a very distant streetscape shot and she is what i focused on so she's really really clear um and he was wandering down too but the girl at the back and that starts to get more and more blurry not super blurry still quite defined but just not totally in focus and then if we go down all the way here around here it starts to lose so we've got a fair chunk that's going to be in focus when we have a deep shot like this then i put it right up against the wall and just wanted to trace so it goes from one end it's blurry 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 oh look at the texture that's in focus that's in focus and then it starts to leave focus we go all the way up here and that's what i focused on and held it quite well if I go this way yeah so it starts at the edges to get because that's closer to me and that's further away from me so that's not too bad but about here it starts to get blurry again now I did a close-up of a bike so I was maybe 40 centimeters half a meter away from the bike so that's starting to get blurry there but as you can see this is all blurry in the background but the bike pops off it so when you want to shoot something close that's what you're kind of looking at and what you're dealing with had these fountains and so I tried shooting with this in focus it didn't look good but when I put this in focus the water really looked nice now the speed was 1 over 20th so 1 20th of a second and what I'd love to do with this is just do a quick edit because I really think it would make a whole world of difference to this shot and well it's just sad taking better shots than that you know, when it all goes pear-shaped, you think, it's a shot in that, and there's probably not. Just go black and white, and you're good to go. On to the next. This shot's cool, because this is a window, and in the background, we have this guy and the cafe and stuff. But then this chick is see sitting behind me, and these are the chairs. These are all behind me, so the reflection in the mirror. So this, this window into what's happening presents two worlds. And I was intrigued to how the autofocus was going to prioritize what it was. And it actually focused on him, but has her in focus and a lot of the background. It's just, oh, just so much in a story. And what I do with this photo is I actually frame this up using Lightroom and put it nice and straight. There you go, just like that. Moving on, they had these lamps and I tried to take a photo of myself in it. And this is interesting about what's in focus. None of this is really in focus until you get to the light globes, which makes sense because I just pointed the camera up and it focused on this. I could have put my focal point on the edge here. It would have made me and everything else a little bit blurry and maybe popped it out a little bit more. I don't know. The challenge you have with the 4.5 is you can't have this and this in focus when you're taking this shot. And uh, this was just an outside shot. Just looks really nice. I like the detail. I like the color it brings up. I just like the, the feel that this lens gives, especially when you haven't got a lot of light to play with. And these are beautiful, whatever they are. If you know what these are, comment down below and tell me what they are. But look how beautiful they are. And they just, they just pop out. I shot up a column and look, it's all blurry, except for what I focused on. Bingo. So I focused there and just saw how blurry it gets. So we go, it goes blurry quite quickly. And then once it gets to about here, the blurriness stays the same. 
uh, which is what apertures do. They don't go in more increments of blurriness, they actually go to a point of blurriness and then that's where it holds. Let's do some panning. And panning is when you put it on a very long exposure. So this is a sixth of a second. Uh, I had a low ISO because that allows in a lot of light. You follow a vehicle or something that's moving and as you're moving, you press go on the shutter, you keep moving and it takes a photo. So that is just fabulous in terms of result and I haven't even edited that up straight out of camera so if I'm going to edit that up oh yeah love it and then finally there's a little bit of a pine forest nearby so I thought I'm just going to shoot up into the trees this looks good look at the detail of these needles and there's no chromatic aberration which is really really impressive holds the detail of those needles and if I just edit this up so you can see what's going on and I drop the shadows and again black and white if the lights all flat all right let me know down below what you think of the quality of these photographs that come straight out of the camera with this 28 mil pancake fixed 4.5 aperture prime lens I honestly never thought I would play with or see a lens this small and shallow wow so what did you think of the images would you consider getting this like is it something that well i know it fits in your bag look how tiny it is and it's got to be said the thinnest lens in the world you can stick it in your pocket or you can stick it in your mouth don't don't do that with your lens i'm gonna go clean it now so is it the thinnest lens in the world I have no idea, it is not a factual statement, just a question, but if you've got any competitive offerings you can suggest, let's do some research and see if it is the thinnest lens in the world. It's live now from Viltrox, I'd encourage you to check out the links below, go and check it out for yourself, 100 US dollars can, can be yours, and you've got some discounts available to you now if you use the link in the description below. That's crazy, I just, thanks for watching, hope this helped, I'll see you in the next review. Bye. So tiny. Ah, oh, you can um, subscribe and like and... Do they have a bell still? If they have a bell, ring the bell. Better yet, if you want to buy me a coffee, buy me a coffee. You can do that down below. <laughs> or not. Ah, whatever. Thanks heaps for watching. Bye.